So in this video, we're gonna be solving linear equations. It's just a review, so you should already know how to do this. I'm just showing you again. So I'm gonna jump through a bunch of examples, and this is the first one, but before I do, a couple of little things that I wanna tell you. The first is to keep the goal in mind. You're trying to isolate the unknown. H has a four next to it and a seven next to it. We wanna get rid of those fours and sevens and get H all by itself on one side of the equation. Now the process to get to that goal, do the same thing on both sides of the equal sign. Okay, if you add something on this side, add it on that side. If you divide by two on this side, divide by two on that side. That's step one. The other thing is the order of operations. Now, you might be used to operating on a number and using the order of operations, BOMDAS or BIMDAS or PEDMAS or PEMDAS, whatever it might be. When you are trying to solve for an unknown, you are reversing the order of those things. Sad mob. So first you look for subtraction and addition, do those things first. Then you look for division and multiplication, do those things next. Then you do uh, order or indices. And then finally you do brackets. If you work in that order, you can't go too far wrong. So jumping through this question using this process, we want H to be by itself, right? That's what we want to do. We want to isolate the unknown. Now, sad mob. There are two things that are in the way. There's a divide by four and there's a subtract seven. And I need to get rid of both of those things. Which one should I get rid of first? According to my sad mob here, I should do subtraction and addition before I do division and multiplication, which means that I should get rid of this negative seven. And the way to get rid of a negative seven is by adding seven to both sides. Now there are a lot of different ways to set this out and you should run it by me in class if you wanna talk about whether you're setting it out correctly. But this is one way to set it out. Adding seven to both sides, negative seven plus seven, they're gonna cancel each other out, that was the goal. Um, we're left with H on four on the left hand side, negative three plus seven is four on the right hand side. Now the final thing to get H by itself is to get rid of this four here. And it's a divide by four. So to get rid of a divide by four, I need to use the inverse of that, which is a multiply by four. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by four. So I multiply by four on this side, I multiply by four on this side, divide by four, multiply by four, the fours cancel out, and four times four equals 16. Now, I'm moving fast because this is stuff that you've done before. Now, do you have to show all this working? No, here's a far um, more efficient way of doing this. So here's a slightly more efficient way of working here. Because on the left-hand side, that negative seven plus seven cancel each other out, when I do that step, I don't bother putting it in. I just jump straight to this step. Uh, similarly, here, where this multiply by four, divide by four, they cancel each other out. I just don't bother putting them in there because they've canceled each other out. Um, now, this could have also been more efficient. So in this version, I've jumped from this step right the way down to this step. I've said this uh, this bit here, it's so simple, I'm just going to do it in my head. So I've uh, added 7 to both sides. Adding 7 to this side is going to get rid of the negative 7. Adding 7 to this side is going to make positive 4. And then on this next line, I've said, I'm just going to multiply by 4 here. And doing that so fast, I'm just going to do it in my head. H on 4 equals 4. H equals 16. And that working is kind of enough. So how do you choose whether to do this, the previous version, or this much shorter version? Three competing ideas here, accuracy, speed, and communication. Now, accuracy will come if you do more steps in your working because you're less likely to stuff it up if you're writing it all down. Speed will come if you do less steps in your working. Accuracy and speed brought together is something called efficiency. There's no point being fast if you're not accurate, and there's no point being accurate if you only get half of the exam done. So you need to find the sweet spot for you. And for everyone, that communication sweet spot is a little bit different. Speaking of, communication is an important idea here. If you are skipping three steps at a time, maybe you're being accurate, maybe you're being fast, but if I can't follow the three steps, if I can't figure out what you've done in those three steps, then you're not communicating. And that's a problem. Maths is a language, maths is communication. All right, so with this question, there's more than one way to do it. I'm gonna do it both ways. Now, our goal is to isolate the unknown. You can see the unknown is on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So we need to get it all onto one side eventually. All right, we need to do the same thing on both sides. I'm gonna break that rule and you'll see why in a second. And we need to follow this order here. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see these brackets here and I'm gonna say, oh, I could expand those brackets using the distributive law. 
Now, you'll notice I'm not doing the same thing on both sides because I'm not actually doing anything. I'm just rearranging this left-hand side. So that becomes 6d minus 10 equals 2d plus 6. Next step here, I need to get all of the 2d's onto one, or sorry, all of the d's onto one side. So I have a 6d here, I have a 2d here. If I subtract 2d from both sides, that'll have the effect of bringing that 2d over to here. And 2d minus 2d, I'll just be left with 6 on this side. All right. Finally, 6d minus 2d is 4d. I'll, sub I'll add 10 to both sides. Now, adding 10 to this side will mean that the 10 disappears. Adding 10 to this side will make it look like this. We have 4d equals 16. And finally, I can divide both sides by 4. 4d divided by 4 is simply d. And 16 divided by 4, that will equal 4. All right, now I said there were two ways to do this, and there are. So rather than expanding those brackets as my first step, I can see it as two multiplied by all of this. And according to sad mob, the first thing I can do is undo these brackets, right? So two multiplied by, the opposite of that is divide by. So I can do 3d minus five on this side and then divide both sides by two. That'll get rid of the two here and the effect will be dividing this side by 2. Now, look at the top here, 2d plus 6. I could factorise that. I can bring a 2 on the outside, and I'm left with 2 times d plus 3 all over 2, and 3d minus 5 over here. Now, these 2s, 2 times d plus 3 divided by 2. The 2s cancel out. I've got d plus 3 equals 3d minus 5. Subtracting d from both sides, I get 3d minus d. Oops, that's a d. And adding 5 to both sides, that negative 5 will disappear, and that's 3 plus 5 makes 8. 2d equals 8, and d equals 8 divided by 2, which is 4. Same answer, two different ways. As long as you don't break any mathematical rules, you'll get to the... So a third example here, and again, I can sort of see two ways of working here. If you don't know what to do, just do something and don't break any rules. So, for instance, I can see a 4 here, right? And it's like a divide by 4. So I could get rid of that 4 by multiplying both sides by 4. Now, you need to be careful here and make sure that you multiply the entire left-hand side by 4, and that 4 is going to cancel out there. All right, after that, uh, I can see like a set of brackets that I could expand. So four times that and four times that. So from here, I can see like a minus eight sort of dangling off the end. So let's add eight to both sides. And now I've got 4x on 3 equals x plus 7. I've got this 3 down the bottom. I can multiply both sides by 3. And finally, I can move that 3x or subtract 3x from both sides. 4x minus 3x is x. And we're left with 21. X is equal to 21. Now, maybe you didn't think to do that. Maybe you were feeling a different kind of way. Instead, you were thinking about fractions. And you thought, if all of these fractions had the same denominator, I'd be in business. So you thought, okay, 3 and 4, they have a common... We could, we could go up to 12 as a common denominator there. Uh, and we could also make this have a denominator of 12 as well. So to get everything having the same denominator, you multiply top and bottom by 4, top and bottom by 12, and top and bottom by 3, and you've got something like this. Now you've got two fractions with the same denominator uh, subtracted from each other, so you can write them as a single fraction, 4x minus 24 all over 12. And you could uh, do like a little uh, distributive law here, 3x minus 3 equals uh, over 12. So now you have something over 12 equals something over 12. And we can get rid of these 12s here by multiplying both sides by 12, in which case we'll have 4x minus 24 equals 3x minus 3. Subtracting 3x from both sides, 4x minus 3x is x. Adding 24 to both sides, negative 3 plus 24 is 21. Same answer. If I'd run into this question, I probably would have gone with the pink version here. That's my first instinct. 
But looking at them two side by side, this feels more uh, efficient. But it doesn't matter how you get to the answer. You don't get style points here. So don't break any mathematical rules. Do the same thing to the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Just keep going until you isolate the X. Now, I include this example because it happens so often that I'd be negligent if I didn't talk about it. A lot of people use the word cross multiplication here. I'm not going to. Instead, I'm just going to talk about making the denominators the same. So multiply top and bottom here by 5. Multiply top and bottom here by 3. And you might be thinking to yourself, wait, he's not doing the same thing on both sides. That's right. I'm not doing the same thing on both sides because I'm not doing anything. If I multiply top and bottom of a fraction by something, it's going to be exactly the same as how it started. If I multiply top and bottom of a fraction by some other thing, it's going to be exactly the same as how it started. Essentially, I'm just multiplying the left-hand side and the right-hand side by 1. And now stop and think. If 5 times a plus 7 over 15 equals 3 times a minus 3 over 15, then the, this bit must be equal to this bit or a simpler way of thinking of it perhaps, just multiply both sides by 15, and you're left with... Now once it looks like that, distributive law on both sides, rearrange, answer. Answer. All right, that's it. Solving linear equations review. Keep your goal in mind. We're trying to isolate whatever unknown we have, and then just don't break any rules.